in the hot seat this evening, Vim Plazia, Managing Director at HD Kani, South Africa. We're taking a look at foreign direct investment in Africa. And as we've said, South Africa ranking 11th. Is that correct in the world? Correct. That seems relatively high. It is high, but you have to take into account we did a confidence index. So we interviewed 200 executives worldwide from uh, a, a wide series of industry sectors in 27 countries um, and asked them where they would think what, what gives them most confidence from an investment perspective in countries. And there, South Africa comes up at, uh, at place number 11. Looking at FDI inflows, 2008, we saw some 9 billion US dollars into South Africa. Mm -hmm. And in 2009, 5 billion US dollars. 2010, 1.5 billion US dollars. So they're not putting their money where their mouths are at the moment, are they? You need to look at this in relative terms. Overall, the foreign direct investments has gone down globally due to the, uh, the, the, the crisis in 2008. So we're still, let's say the economy is still picking up and investments, foreign investments are still picking up as well. The, the point you need to take into account is that investments in, let's say, the developed world, North mm. America, Western Europe, has reduced significantly, and in developing world, um, and some of these countries are not that developing any longer, look at China and look at India, but also look at South Africa, there is an increased confidence of investments in these countries being a good investment for growth for the future. One of the other key developments is that China has been at the top of, of the FDI exactly. flows since 2002. And uh, another significant development is US has fallen out of number two spot taken by India. So we've got China, India, Brazil, am I correct? correct. Yeah, correct. I think that is a very significant find this time. Mm -hmm. What you see is that uh, the US has dropped significantly from place number two to place number four. Uh, the top three is now China, India, Brazil. 11 is South Africa. Um, 12 is Russia. Vietnam is following. So you see that the, the, the new countries, let's call it the new countries, the new economy countries, are basically taking a larger part of uh, foreign direct investment. Vim, what do they look for? You know, what criteria do they look for from an investment point of view? The, first of all, they, they look for growth. And if you look at the investments, particularly in South Africa, they are, of course, resource industry related. Mm -hmm. um, that is clear. But they're also related to the increase in the, um, in the, in the consumer uh, population. You're, so we see more and more in South Africa and in other countries in Africa as well mm -hmm. that uh, consumer spending is going up. Mm -hmm. Hence, companies like Walmart step into the market because they believe they can grow here. So apart from the traditional investments in resources and infrastructure and so on, we see now that new investments is coming in in things like retail, mm -hmm. but also for a while already in telecommunications, for example. Mm -hmm. You could say that in telecommunications, from a telecommunications perspective, what happens here in Southern Africa is way ahead of what happens in, in, in North America mm -hmm. and, in, mm -hmm. uh, and in Europe. Uh, electronic banking through telephones is not a normal thing in Europe. It is already for a while here in South Africa. So there are a lot of opportunities where companies are stepping into, and this is a growth market. We've seen in other markets in, in, in the north that they are not really mm. growing at all. I, I see one of the key concerns that you've tabled, uh, well, certainly that investors surveyed uh, have tabled, is regulation. Yeah. And that obviously, the, the face of regulation in emerging markets changes all the time. It yeah. can be one thing today and a completely different thing tomorrow. The investors are looking for stability. Mm. Um, so what we see in, uh, in the developed uh, world, North America, Europe, is that the, the concern is mainly around taxation, given the state of the economy and the state of the currencies. In the uh, other countries, like China, India, but also South Africa, what the investors are looking for is stability from a regulatory perspective. Um, and they make a business case on the basis of a particular situation at a particular moment in time, and they would like to see that the criteria around that business case remain as much the same. So regulatory stability is a very important mm -hmm. factor for, um, uh, for investments. Mm -hmm. how, how do we match up against South America? I'm not going to ask about Asia or India. Mm -hmm. How do we match against something like South America? Is well, it Brazil was third. Brazil is third. And you see, of course, uh, that uh, Brazil has an enormous boost due to the oil fines offshore mm. already for a while mm. and, uh, and huge development there. We see that Brazil is investing into Africa. Mm. Uh, that is an, another point as well. We see that India is investing into Africa. Mm. China has already done for quite a while. So how are we comparing? I think uh, one of your previous speakers talked about the, uh, the gas mm. find in Mozambique. Mm. If 
the Mozambique gas finds comes to fruition, if we look at Namibia, where there was also a signal about a, a large oil find, mm -hmm. if these things start to come in, that could change significantly mm -hmm. the whole, let's say, industrial infrastructure of the southern part of Africa. And that gives you the opportunity to look a bit like Brazil and to go in that direction. Mm -hmm. When I pointed out that FDI had fallen from 9 billion US dollars to 5 billion US dollars into South Africa and then to 1.5 yeah. in 2010, you said it's a relative game. Exactly. You've got to look at it comparatively. When do you think we're going to return to pre-crisis levels? You will potentially return in the next couple of years to sort of pre-crisis levels, but it will take time. But what you will see is that the investments come from different directions than where they have come from in the past. So um, uh, there will be more investments by the countries I just mentioned, like uh, China will continue to invest in, uh, mm. in Africa. India will boost its investments further. Brazil will continue to invest in, uh, in Africa as well. So when the, the volumes go up again and when there is more money which will be invested in Africa, it's likely to come from different sources. And um, nobody knows when the stuff in Europe is going to stabilize and when Europe is going to grow at a similar rate like... What, you mean uh, you don't know? Um, we were hoping I you were going to no give us answers to that. <laughs> no are, there, are there any um, not so obvious countries you know, there any that we wouldn't think you know about? Is there some new emerging country that we haven't thought about that the world's looking at? For me, the um, I, I think what is striking uh, in this assessment, and mm. what is also striking in an article which was uh, earlier on in the week in the Economist, mm. is that I believe there is a clear confidence in Africa as mm. a continent for growth, mm. and the more that message is going to be re-emphasized and the more the countries and the companies and uh, and the other social partners in the economies in Africa are going to show that they want to live up to that expectation I think for me that is one of the major things coming out of this uh, this survey um, South Africa should be proud that it is at 11th place but it also uh, creates expectations mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that you stay at the 11th mm -hmm. spot in uh, in this uh, benchmark or it's not really a benchmark it's a confidence mm -hmm. index so I think for me the most important thing which comes out for me is indeed that um, Africa is recognized as a destination mm -hmm. for investments for growth Mm -hmm. We haven't had the best news flow politically out of South Africa of late. Uh, and I go right back to the talks of nationalization for some time. All these mounting concerns for, for FDI. Mm -hmm. What would be the, the caution you throw to the mm -hmm. South African economy, to South African politicians right now, holding a position in terms of 11th place where foreign direct investment is concerned is a weighty one. Mm -hmm. But how do we maintain that? Now, I'm not going to comment in detail on the politics in South Africa, so I will refrain from that. But if you look at what is what is what, what companies are looking for, they look for stability. So that's point number one. So regulatory stability is a very important point. They are also looking for an educated workforce. So if we talk in, in, in South Africa about jobs, jobs and jobs, we also need to make sure, um, and that's not only a government responsibility, but I think also there, uh, for example, the unions and the, uh, the companies have a, mm. uh, the corporate world has a role to play as well, uh, that the education system is such that it becomes even more attractive uh, to, mm. uh, to invest in South Africa. So there are a number of things which need to be looked into, which make sure that productivity in the country goes, even, goes up and that it becomes far more attractive to uh, invest here compared to what it is now. And that will bring South Africa even higher up on the list. You satisfied, David? I, I, I am satisfied. I'm, I, you know, I just want to see it. I just, uh, you want to believe in it. You know? well, I, I, I think there's a message that has to go to the country, and I think we have to adjust a lot of our policies in order to embrace this. And what concerns me about Africa is if you know, African leaders are not known for sharing. You know, if you come into the country, I think, uh, there's always a feeling that um, they want to take the bulk for themselves, which I think doesn't really uh, help growth and has kept Africa back from some time. Yeah, if you look at, uh, mm. at other countries which have been successful mm. in attracting foreign investment and which have been successful in basically stepping up uh, mm. um, on the expectations, those are all countries where government, mm. corporate world and unions really mm. came together mm. and started to build a compact a compact for further growth, yeah. a compact for further education, for further health care, mm. further housing. Those elements need to be taken mm. into account here as well. Um, and if, if that happens, mm. um, then there is a lot of opportunity. Mm. Uh, that counts for every country and that mm. for sure counts then for South Africa. Thank as well. you very much for your time.